together in unity. Oh God, we need you more every day that we live. Make this a house of worship today. Open our hearts and minds to you, oh God. Help us to lay aside every way and the sin that does so easily beset us. Press into thy kingdom today, oh God. And bless the churches everywhere where we're together in your name. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Well, a lot of people drug out on this bad old day. It's good to be alive. Good to serve the Lord. Isn't it? Good to know Him. Good to have peace in your heart. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Let the weak say, I am strong. I was kind of weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. Yes. Amen. Look at you. Uh, Judy there. She's Say it louder than anybody. I said, I'm getting ready to point somebody to take your place. I didn't think you'd be here today. She said, I ain't going to quit, buddy. I ain't going to quit. God, for somebody that won't quit. Hallelujah. Will not be stopped. We will not bow. We will not bow. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to say, worship him. 
as Judy, Judy, Judy can lead our singing.
<laughs> she must have something on. <laughs> We're glad you're here. It's good to see you. Amen. And it's good to see all of you today. And God is good today. We thank Him for the hope that's in our heart today. Just as big today as it was 30 years ago, even greater. Because we don't, uh, we're not just sitting on the beach here. We know what we're doing, where we're going, where we're headed. All right. Yes. Uh, Randy uh, Parent used to sing, "Oh, my brother, where are you heading?" He's about that big. <laughs> where are you going when you die? <laughs> <laughs> are you heading up to heaven? To that home on high. <laughs> when I see him, I still tease him about it. He used to sing it down to Sister Betty's. But uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing to know where you're heading. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where you're heading? Where you gonna go? Seems like the Lord's been dealing with me a lot about this lately. You know, I really think there was a period of time that the church got hung up in a lot of isms and schisms and things that didn't really amount to very much. And it's it's a Satan's way of getting us off of the track. Mm -hmm. uh, in this message today, it, it's kind of bringing us back to what <coughs> we're really what this is all about. Let me get into this. I got a lot to read and I. And I got a lot to say, and I'd like to get through this today. If the Lord will, I may not, but we'll see. I haven't known not to. But. <laughs> but we're not trying to just bring you a bunch of facts and figures anyhow. We got a message from the Lord, and that's what we're trying to actually get to. But it seems like the last several uh, messages I've taught and preached has been basically along the same lines that we need to refo refocus what we're doing and where we're heading and what we're about. And it's not about, you know, people can get caught up in judgment and worried about what everybody else in the church is doing, about trying to, uh, you know, try to judge. It's good to see you this morning. I've been thinking a lot about you this week. Now, see how the Lord does. When I saw you come in, I said, there she is. And you didn't know somebody was thinking about you, did you? But she was coming real regular there for a while, and all of a sudden I didn't see you for a while. But it's really good to see you. I see Brother Fred this morning, too. Oh, yeah, it is. And Brother Fred's been sick, I understand. But it's... Bob got a little confused. He thought I was sick, but they called me at, uh, like, 10 minutes until I was supposed to be here. Oh, I see. And asked me if I so, wanted to work to go pick up blankets. I see. I went and picked up blankets. I got on by calling me at church time. <laughs> and they know I'm here every Sunday. There ain't no sense to call. Well, we know you're here every Sunday too, and that's why we missed you when you weren't here. I mean, there ain't no sense to call me after this. I made it quick. Well, I started saying we know who to borrow money off of now. You're working on Sunday. Good <laughs> luck. It's just like everybody else. They gotta go after this week. My, when I get this income tax check after this, they gotta go to home bank and argue with them. <laughs> well, you can give us a check. You take check. No, Bob talked to you well. Don't be over there. We're glad you're here, man. You've really been faithful the last uh, year, oh, man, year and a half, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, all, good, all it took was for me to quit drinking and carrying on and get my life together. Amen. Amen. That's major. That's not that's not no small things, right? Really. That's major. I had I had a serious people problem up until I started coming to church. I thought Praise I was going to get yeah. They wanted in my pocket. <laughs> a lot of people do. A lot of people do. I'm trying to get in there, but you won't let me in. <laughs> I love you, my brother. I'm glad you're here today. And it's good to serve the Lord, isn't it? But, uh, but anyhow, uh, I, I, I really think God is wanting us to re refocus. Uh, you know, there's a time to go back to the beginning. Yep. And... and uh, What's the Bible say about walking in the old paths? Mm -hmm. He said, seek you the old paths. That old path that we got back to. I remember when I got saved, I want to tell everybody about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found something that the world didn't give and the world didn't, couldn't yeah. take it away. Oh, and I was so excited about this thing, I just had to tell it and had to tell it and had to yes. tell it. I couldn't keep it to myself. And that's really that, that first love. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Jesus warned us in the book of Revelations, to return to our first love. Yes. And I believe there's a time we have to do that. We have to, uh, you know, because we get in, we get churchified. People get too churchified. And then before you know it, they're judging between people in the church. And mm -hmm. First of all, they judge churches. 
we're it and they're not it. See what we I lived through that for many years. We're it and they're not it. And I found out God's wherever He wants to be. Amen. Amen. And you can you can resent it, but if God wants to bless somebody, He'll bless whom He will bless. Right. And you might well just forget about it. And uh, and and then if that don't work, well then He'll cause you to to look around in your own church and start judging. In fact, Paul said there is a people that judge themselves by themselves yeah. and compare themselves with themselves. Yeah. And so these people are not wise. It's not a wise thing to do. We're all here today by the grace of God. Amen. We're all where we're at because God called us to get here. Amen. And we're in different stages of growth. You know, we've got some babies in the midst. we got some a little further up the line and all the way up. And that's the way that goes. I used to worry because about getting into deep things yes. or getting into things that would confuse the younger. But God got the way of closing up the ears. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't hear those things. That's right. I used to worry about that. But God manages yeah. to feed everybody. Amen. Right. Wherever you're at, wherever you're standing is, and Lord God can get His message Amen. to you. He knows how to do it. I remember one time there was something went forth in the service and uh, we had an evangelist. When you have an evangelist, unless you know him real well, and sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, and even then after you know him, what? We had one evangelist one time that I had several times, and then he came in one night and, and got on some of the silliest, most ridiculous stuff, and I thought, good Lord, when did you ever get that out? <laughs> and Paul said, when I come to you, I determined to know nothing among you but Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I yeah. talked to our young ministers, I said, look, when you go, preach Christ. Yeah. Don't pay attention to what's going on there. Don't pay attention to what you guess about them, what you know about them. You're not preaching to the, you know, the church. You're preaching, you're preaching Christ. Yeah. That's all you got to worry about. Because you can get off. And Satan will use anything to cause you not to be effective. I, I, there's, there's some ministers that you know that I favor. And now we haven't had Ray... Uh, uh, Napier quite a while and some of you know I love Brother Ray Napier. Oh, he's, he's one of my favorite ministers. Yes. One thing I love most about Ray, he doesn't preach a lot of silliness. Mm -hmm. He preaches the Word of God. Amen. He doesn't preach dress. He doesn't preach outward Amen. appearance. He doesn't preach He doesn't preach church doctrine. Yeah. He preaches Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Amen. I love that about him. And for that matter, reason, he can go into almost any church and be effective. Sure. There's some people can't go in some churches because they go in and offend. Yeah. Uh, we're getting ready to have a community saying next month at the Trinity Nazarene Church. Amen. And Brother Bob asked me to, to do this and so we decided we will do it. It's going to be open. I don't know who will be there. There will be other churches there. We want to remember that all those other people are not Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. And we have to give them honor too. Right. They're Christians. And I'm not telling you to to uh, to you know tone anything down, go and obey God, but don't try to show them we got it and you ain't got nothing. Right. 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 I've been in that and I know when it's being done, yeah. and it's offensive, yes. and it, it tears down the work of God. It doesn't do any good. In the first place, if all that demonstration did all that much, half of Martinsville would be saved. Right. I can point to you people almost every block that's jumped and shouted and run and carried on and they ain't doing nothing today but living the way they want to live. That's right. yeah. So I, I, it's no sign of your salvation no, how much no. you can jump and haul. Amen. It's how straight you walk when you hit the ground. Yes. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's the truth. People judge you by the way that you live. Uh -huh. They watch you. They read you like a book. They read you. They're reading your letter all the time. And if you don't do as a minister... How many times it said to me, oh, do they go to your church? Yeah, you know, you'd never know they go to church. I'm not going to make the faces. Oh, my. Mark, 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 They go to your church. Should have got the back row, Mark. And I almost hate to hear what's going to come next. You ought to have to live next door to them. Or you ought to have to work with them. That's how they carry on. That does happen. What do I say? I said, well, I'll just pray for him. I don't want to say. They're not supposed to take that away. Not my sheep. Not my sheep. So if you really want to be a, a minister of the gospel, just get your life lined up and, and live God.
according to the dictates of your heart and try yeah. to do the best you can. And I'll tell you, people are not stupid. They know that you're not Superman. They know you're not perfect. You, they know you're weak and you have your problems. But they want you to at least try. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever a big, big conflict comes your way, when you work with people every day, conflicts do come. Conflicts are inevitable. Absolutely. I have a preacher used to say that all the time. Conflicts are inevitable, but defeat is impossible, for Christ is invincible. He used to say that a lot. Amen. It's true words. Amen. Conflict is inevitable. You're going to have it. Somebody's going to rub you the wrong way, or you're going to rub somebody the wrong way. But it's how we handle those situations that proves what we are in God. Amen. And if people yes. read that book, they know. And sometimes they'll pick out one that doesn't get a lot of accolades or get a lot of bragging about them. They don't get a lot of press. They don't have a lot of stars by their name on the little chart of life. <coughs> Maybe it's someone you don't regard very much. And they'll say to me, boy, that individual really is a good person. They really are a good representative of your church. I work with them and they're such a joy to be around. I get those kind of reports too. It makes me feel real good inside. Mm -hmm. But no doubt they don't feel like they're doing very much, but somebody's noticing. Mm -hmm. Somebody's watching. They know. People are not stupid. They know. And they know if you're a Christian, that means Christ-like. That's right. See, the Christians didn't call themselves Christians. The Bible said they were first called Christians in Antioch. And the people called them Christians because they acted like Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 So you don't have to wear a testament in your pocket all the time. Put no. a little badge on and say, I am Christian. No. Put out your cigarettes and watch your, watch your language around me. I had a superintendent I worked with, and he, he, he warned all the guys where I was working that watch the language and do this and that. And I could tell them guys just detested me. They hate me even come around. And I called him up and I said, please don't do that. Please don't do that. I mean, and, and he, he meant well. I knew he meant well. He was trying to make things easy. But these guys were construction men. I mean, they were building a new, uh, a new part of the factory down there. And there was electricians in there. And there was all kinds of, you know, laboring people. I mean, you laughed and joked and cut up. And you know, I just sh shut it off. I don't even hear it. I'm, I'm praising God, going about my business. I don't pay attention to what they're saying. They're just blowing anyway. Most of us just blow. They don't mean nothing by it. And he's wanting to get them all uncomfortable. Oh no, here comes the preacher. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now it is awful nice if you develop an atmosphere around you yes. to where they, they just automatically, automatically tone it down. Yes. And they do kind of watch what they're saying. And there's not very much said about it. But they just do it because they, they're giving honor to God. Right. Amen. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And that's what you want. Yes. Amen. And so there's a way to preach. There's a lot of ways to preach this gospel. And they know where you stand and what you stand for. Yeah. And they'll come up and tell you some of the god awfulest jokes. Yes. And they're funny. <laughs> and it's, it's hard yeah. not to laugh. Yeah. Come on, it's funny. Yeah. But it's silly, you know, and it's hard to look. Just look at them and just kind of look kind of blank and just walk off. <laughs> but that's the best thing you can do. I have had them come back later. So I'm sorry. I said I shouldn't have said that to you. That's why I appreciate that because you are right. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I shut you off. I don't even. I don't even agree. And most time you do. I always do. When I was on the job, I I. Uh, Joe there, he drives a lift truck. I used to drive a lift truck. I'd get caught up in my own little world, or worse with the Lord, and I'd run on my little lift truck, and I, I was gone. Sometimes they'd say, look at him, he's gone. Out of this world. Out of this world, gone. I got that song, you know, that, 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 that one you used to sing, said he's gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone, gone. That, that's me, all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. All righty, after these things, the Lord appointed the other seventy also and sent them two by two, before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great. And this is the point I was, want, I was wanting to get to. How many believe we're in the last day? Amen. Well, I know we've been saying that a long time. 
But honestly, <laughs> too many things are happening now. You know, yeah, things are moving so fast, and honestly, <laughs> what is a long time to us really ain't very much. And in God's time, it's just a drop in the bucket. It yeah. don't have to heal a bee. <coughs> and I can remember 16 just like yesterday. It just seemed like I was 16 with duck tails and uh, rocking in the bottom of the big, 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 big uh -huh. you know. And then, Lord, oh, it's gone. It's, it's gone. I don't know where it went to, but it's gone. I can look in the mirror and I can see very well it ain't there no more. <laughs> what happened? It done gone. And guess what? But we'll have a new body. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We'll, we'll have, have a new life. life. Yes. I, believe, I believe that message. Hallelujah. And, uh, but, but it's easy to get caught up in those things. The harvest truly is great. And this is where we gotta, we've got to come back to, that, to, to the beginning. This is our first call to the harvest. Sister, uh, my uh, great aunt, Sister Kay Coleman, wrote that song. Soon the harvest will be ended. Soon we'll pull the shades of night. Amen. Soon the harvest will be ended. It's a great song. Mm -hmm. To the harvest, to the harvest, let us work with all our mind. The song says, can't you hear the Savior calling? Hi, Grammy. I, my daughter had called me because she worked and I got only too late. And I was going to sit there with his body, you know, wait for the funeral home got there. And I, I, I read in there, it said, my works, may my works follow me to heaven. And I've, I've asked every minister I've come in contact with. And nobody knows. But I thought, sitting there, you know, looking at him, you know, his works are going to follow me. Yes, sir. And you know, there was a man, and a lot of people, didn't, they didn't know him at all. They didn't know who he was. This man was at Azusa Street. He saw those miracles we read about and stuff. Mm -hmm. Back there when the Holy Ghost fell back there in the early part of the century. I used to get around him every chance I get and let, had him tell me about it. I mean, he he was he was a man of God. If there's ever a man of God. He was. Clyde Remick was a man of God. Buddy. And he was in that early revival back there in, in uh, was it L.A. or out there in yeah. California. He said his greatest desire that God would put him back in the saddle and let him preach one more sermon. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was a wonderful man. He was 99 years old when he died. And we don't, we're together, but we really don't know who we are in God. You don't know who you're sitting with. Mm -hmm. I can look back at some of the really great mm -hmm. men that, that I've walked alongside of. And and you don't realize because we're just, we're just people. Mm -hmm. But we're more than that. The Bible said we're princes and kings. Think about that. A chosen people. A royal priesthood. Very special. Special people above all the people on the face of the earth. Yes. Think about all the rulers and the great kings of the earth. Guess what? Some of the children of God in the eyes of God are greater than that. Yes. That widow woman that gave her last night, mm -hmm. the Lord said she gave more than all. Uh -huh. See? That's the one that we want to please. Isn't that right? Amen. The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore. Our prayer should be the Lord of the harvest said he would send forth labors into the harvest. Brother Ray Napier told one time that he had this vision. And in the vision there was a there was a field there and it was ripe. And he said people were sitting there and they were just trumping down all the wheat. And they're stomping it all over the place. And the Lord told the man, said, put a put a lock on that gate and get them out of that field. They were, they were trying to separate the tares from the wheat mm. and they were destroying all the wheat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The church falls into this bad. trap. We'll mm -hmm. decide who's good and who's bad. We'll take this one, but we don't want this one. They begin to separate and divide people and they begin to judge between themselves. It's a bad spirit to have. Lord said, I'll separate when I come. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll decide what's wheat and what's oh chaff. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, I want you to close that field up and get over here and work in this field and work right. Bring in the bring in the harvest. Bring in the harvest. And don't worry about those tares. I'll take care of the tares when I come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'll tell you, you can get Hallelujah. caught up in that. <laughs> right away. My, my mother used to say, my mother had a problem with smoking for years. She used to say, anything worse than a reformed smoker. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that. Right away, they decide. Well, you know, I, I'm, 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 
I'm delivered now, and so they're going to deliver everybody else in the world. Yeah. They're going to tell everybody else what they ought to do. And it's amazing how you can get caught up in that self-righteous spirit, and that's what that is. But I tell you this, I thank God that I don't do a lot of things I used to do, Amen. but it's only by the grace of God. Amen. If I had my way, I'd probably be doing all of them and more. Because that's the way the human flesh is. Right. But I do thank God that I, I, I've got a few problems, but thank God that, you know, I can say, oh, thank God that's not one of them. Yes, amen. And I can have understanding and empathy for people that are fighting against things in their life. And we've all got things to fight. Amen. Amen. I don't care who you are. I don't care what it is. Yeah. And, there, and there's no value to say this is good and this is bad. Sin is sin to God. In everything, and the Bible said, if you esteem anything to be sin, to you it's sin. Mm -hmm. it's sin. Right? Yeah. You know, Brother Pat says in Jude, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. Uh -huh. Who art thou, old man? He said to judge another. Work out your own salvation. To his own God, he standeth or fall. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Well, I'll tell you this, I had to quit, he has to quit. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> but but you, if you're not careful, you might be wasting a lot of time on somebody that God said he's all right. Mm -hmm. That's right, brother. <laughs> Amen. I found that out to be true. That's God's business. Don't stop God. Amen. And there's things that bother me that wouldn't bother a lot of people. A lot of you know, like, uh, you know, all of that. You've heard me talk about over the years, you know. Now, my mother come to the door, I'd get my shirt on. My mother hardly ever seen me without my shirt. I just didn't go around with my shirt off. I go to the beach, I wear a shirt. No sun's down there. It's all right. Get the inside out. I've heard this, told this story a lot of times, but it's a true story. Uh, preacher down in Nashville, when I was under a whole revival, invited me over to spend the day with him, and he was building an addition onto his house. And uh, had a nice home over there, and First thing he did, peeled his shirt off, and got out there to get to work on the house. He offended me to the death. And the first thing the man said to me was, Brother Pat, this doesn't bother you to have my shirt off. And I lied. I said, no, no. Not at all. <laughs> it drives me nuts. I couldn't be happy to preach and stand out there without a shirt off. <laughs> He and I talked about it in later years and we laughed about it. He said, why didn't you say something? I'd have put the shirt on. I said, I know. I understand that. Today, I would, it, it's nothing. It's just nothing. It wouldn't bother me at all. But just have a and grace and sure. knowledge of the Lord now. I don't, I don't waste my time judging other people about what they do. It, it bothers me. It still bothers me. And I say, Brother Pat, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Go to me without a shirt on. May not be for you, but for me, the shirt goes on, stays on. <laughs> now that's just me. Nothing wrong with it, <laughs> So everybody's got their, you know, the Lord can deal with it. He knows how to deal with you, right? Amen. <coughs> so you don't have to do everything everybody else does. And by the same token, you don't have to judge everybody because they can get by with it. You can't. You sit and and say, I don't see why God lets him get by with that. He won't let me. You ever hear people say that? <laughs> well, it seemed like I was, I saw somebody that didn't have a headlight out, so I never could get by with that. I'd at least had a warning ticket. I'd had some kind of a ticket. And I see people drive months and months and months with a headlight out or a taillight out. I was going up Post Road uh, sometime last year, and this, this girl, this uh, cop, pulled me over, said, You know, you got a taillight out. No, I did not know it. <laughs> I just want to give you a warning to you, and I said, well, that's fine. I see people all over town, some of them the same car I see week in and week out, and the tail light is still out. Why don't somebody stop them? <laughs> you ever had that happen? But I can't get by with it. They're out to get you. <laughs> I bought a car out of the trailer one time, a little common Caliente. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on the way home with it. Hadn't even got it home. And I pulled off of 57 in a little park there in Brooklyn, right off the highway. Pulled up in there, and there's a cop sitting there, a state cop. 
I went by him quiet as I could, because I mean, it, it was loud. <laughs> Here come the light on, and he pulled me over and said, you got a loud enough for And I said, yeah, I tried to explain to him. I just bought this car, you know, and I haven't got a home yet. He didn't care. He wrote me a ticket. Not a warning <laughs> ticket. <laughs> I said, I didn't have a chance to get the car home yet. <laughs> so I never could get by with it. So now I just, I mean, if, I got if, a bunch of warnings. Bug goes out, and I know the, the bug goes in. I get the bug in there. And I, <laughs> so, <laughs> and spiritually, it's the same way, you know. You, know, you might not be able to get by somebody else. Be, my sister drove without a license for 19 years. <laughs> Didn't bother a bit. Sometimes with a quart of beer in her hand. Oh yeah. She's, yeah, she's, she, she drank quarts. She didn't pull them up. She had a quart. <laughs> Sometimes she had it in a sack with wrapped around it, you know. <laughs> The so big bottle. So they the wouldn't big know bottles. what it was. What you call brown bag? Brown bag. <laughs> my one time, my daughter and her ex-husband, they had moved from Ohio up here. They drove on the improper plates for a year and a half. Never got stopped. I see people do that too. I, I, I couldn't do it. So I, oh Lord, I wouldn't even dream of driving out insurance or something, or something like that on a proper plate. I just wouldn't even dream of it. And I see people, they just move from one car to the next. They put pickup plates on a car. They don't care. They move back and forth. Uh, <laughs> not me. Am I killing Mark over here? I am legal right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's a miracle. I got the honor of It's a miracle. Oh, this is a good one. I've had my fair share of tickets. <laughs> Yeah. That's why I said uh, that Lloyd Dunnigan when he was on the road to Dan Lyson said the first ticket he got it made him mad. <laughs> the second ticket he got he said it hurt my feelings. And the third ticket he got he said, Lord, what what are you trying to tell me? He said, slow down. He said, I never got a ticket after that. Yeah. <laughs> so he got the message. He had to pay the price, but he got the message. So <laughs> anyhow. But it said here that uh, he said uh, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. It's a hard, it's a hard world out there. You can waste your time trying to argue with somebody that don't see what you see. If somebody doesn't see what you see, they're never going to buy what you're selling. They have to come to it. They have to see it. And all you can do is inspire them a little bit. Don't you ever doubt that many times they'll say, I don't know what, what that's all about. Yeah. But they definitely there's something different about them people. Don't you think they don't know? They do. And and secretly they even desire I know because I remember when I was when I was in sin, there was people that I could point to that touched me in a special way. Amen. I didn't understand them. Now, I don't think it's out there in La La Land somewhere. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing, there was something about them that I secretly, whatever that, whatever that is, I, I think I might need a little of that. I just don't fully yeah. understand what it's all about. And if you can do that, if you can be even that much of an, the, to touch somebody's life, that's about as good as you're going to do. Hey, Brother Pat, my grandmother used to go to her house and she'd, she'd take me through the whole service. I wasn't a Christian. I'd sit there just to be polite. <laughs> and, and We've that all time, done that. But, but now I wish I could go back and get some. Wouldn't you give anything you have to oh, go back and get that now? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Brother Mark used to haul his grandma around to singings and stuff. He'd be about, high, about that high off the floor. He's hiring a kite and hauling grandma off to sing. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, had, she had no idea. She, she had no idea. She thought she was just really in, getting in the spirit. Didn't she? <laughs> You're not the first one. You're not the only one. Amen. Amen. He's said drag Raymond in this. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell it all. He said, don't tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot, I cannot tell it all. That's right. But all those things has touched our lives. And, and when you're witnessing the people uh, about the goodness of God, and and uh, keep it simple, and... and uh, there's no need trying to debate people into what no, you believe. No. It's not going to happen. No. I've watched people try it for years. It doesn't work. And But you just be yourself. And you stand for what you believe in. Amen. 
and you be surprised how many people it will touch. Mm -hmm. If I could tell you the number of times that, uh, well, I had a boss one time, and I, I think I told this maybe last time as I was teaching, but he had a son that was in, in uh, a mental hospital in the state <clears throat> took at that time. And I didn't know anything about that at all. But he would have me come in sometimes to work on Saturday. And he'd find some reason, sometime during that day, and I'm trying to figure out why he called me in. There's not that much to do, and I'm greasing machines, and I'm just going around trying to find something to keep me occupied. And somewhere before that day was out, he'd come out and have a cup of coffee, and he'd bring me a cup, and he'd sit down, and he'd say, hey, you want to talk? And when he'd talk, then it would begin to come out and begin to talk about his son and how, but he, he felt like he could talk to me. Ah, now I know why he had called me in here today. And we spent the whole afternoon sitting talking about his son. And I'm trying to encourage him some way. On a level that he will understand what I'm saying to him and not trying to be self-righteous or above him in any right. way. But just let him know what God's done in my life yes. and that he, he will do that for anyone. And, 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 it, and it bless his life, bless his heart. And I... I had those things happen to me many, many, many times. I, I can't tell you. Uh, I worked for Henry Hicks, and he lives just two houses down here. And that little mason I'd shop. And he would have me go in on Saturday sometime. I'd go in with nobody else there, just me and him. And I could tell he'd been out celebrating on Friday night. <laughs> Early Saturday morning, I could still smell it. It's still on him, see? I wouldn't say a word to him. And I remember one time I was going up the highway and I was leaning over against the door about half asleep. And all of a sudden he just pounded on the dash, just hit that dash, wham! And I, I'd be a fool to tell you I wouldn't want to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the blue? <laughs> yeah, he was he hungry and trying to get my attention. He wanted to hear from he wanted to hear from God. Yes. Oh, sure. God. And I said, Well, you know. I'm sure you do want to be saved. But to be saved, there has to be a conversion. There has to be changes. Mm -hmm. I would like to change my life. If I could believe this, if I could believe what you've got, I would love to have my life changed. I want you to understand something. Nobody starting out understands this. See, but God is able to reveal Himself to you. Yes. See, the, the, the mind you're of right now is you want to change. And that's all you need uh, for as far as you can go right now. That's all you need is just a desire to have a better life. He don't expect you to understand the whole Bible no. or understand all the plan of salvation or all that. No, it's not near that deep. All you got to do is say, I want to make a change. Yes. That's all you need right now. Amen. And then God, you can grow then to the place that God wants you to see. And just time... From time to time, I was able to drop those things into his heart. And God will use your life that way. That's what he wants you to be. He wants you to be a force for good for those around you. Amen. I know people that go through their lives just arguing and debating the word of God. Mm. They don't win souls. They never win anybody. That'll run people off. This or pushes people away. Mm. It doesn't work. It's a negative thing. Amen. You just, in your humble way, the best you know how to do, just do the best you know how to do and be a witness and let people know that what He's done for you, yes. He'll do for anybody that will come unto Him. Amen. That's all the witness that you need to have. You know, Brother Pat, I love the Scripture. It says, there's just one thing I know, whereas I was blind. Yeah. Now I see. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. And then he said, well, how, how could He have done this? He, that's, a, that's a carpenter's son. Now, I don't know anything about that, he said. Yeah. And he began to give every reason why he couldn't have done that. I only know one thing. I was blind. Now I yeah. see. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. That's all he cares and you can, about. And you can talk against him and say he's this, he's that, he's the other. I don't know anything about it. I know one thing. He spoke to me and he laid his hands on me and now I see. That's all I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why? That's all you need to know for, right. for the time Amen. being. Yeah. And as you go on, then God will teach you his way. I'm glad that, I, that I've that i learned in the ways of God. I'm glad I'm not the person I once was. Oh, yes. Me too. I still am not the person I want to be. Yeah. But thank God I'm not the person that I once was. Amen. Amen. 
So that's the way that we preach the gospel. He said, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. I'm going to show you what this said. Some people say, well, when I, when I get to do this, I'll, I'll, I'll live for God. When I quit doing this, or when I quit doing that, or when I... You no, know, you got to go just like you are. That's right. However weak you are, whatever your problem is, there's a lot of people who say, well, I just ain't ready yet. Guess what? As far as the humanity is concerned, you never will be ready. No. Uh, years ago, you know, I didn't have a whole lot, and I went to church all the time. I had five children. And I wore this same dress every Sunday. And I said, I just feel awful wearing that dress every Sunday. And it was like that. God says, look at them people. Do they know what you wear? They didn't know what I wore every Sunday, yeah, but I was. So you are paying attention to they were paying attention to it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh yes, growing up we had uh, play clothes and uh, school uh -huh. clothes. Yeah. And we had to come in and change our school clothes into our play clothes. Right. And we had two or three sets of school clothes. And that had to last us the week. And oh yes, there's times in the middle of the week they had to wash them out and stuff. And get, you know, I mean, uh -huh. it, it just happened. That's the way we grew up. And uh, you can get all, you know, out of torque over those kind of things. But that's not what it's all about. The outward appearance, let me tell you something. The outward appearance will not save you. No. But God, in your heart, in your life, will change your outward appearance. <coughs> mm -hmm. right. That's where the change has to come from in the heart. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it will affect the outward appearance to, to a large degree. And even then, it may not please anybody else. But, but <coughs> according to the dictates of your heart, what you believe that you ought to be in God. That's, that's how you're going to be, right? Amen. Uh, but just just going through the act of doing the thing is not going to change your heart. That's why some of the some of the meanest people look the most saintly. <laughs> and it's the truth. It's the truth. Because you can put on the, the uniform, you can put on the, the outside, but it doesn't change the heart. Right. But when you get that change of heart, it changes a lot of other yes. things in your life. It changes where you go, how you act, what you do, who you associate with. That's right. And the things you buy, the things you wait, you spend your time on, mm -hmm. the things your eyes look at, the things you feast upon, those things, they gotta, they got to be changed. And only God can do that. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 So true. So he said, uh, so he said, carry neither personal script. Nothing wrong with a personal script, but what he was saying is, don't put your confidence on those things. There have been some people have done the greatest works that's ever been done that didn't have the money to do it. They just did it. And there's some people with the ability to solve a lot of world's problems with their money, and they ain't going to give nothing to nobody. So that's not where it's at. You do what you can, where you're at, with what you've got, and God will give you more. Yeah. They used to sing a song of Pentecost, give unto the Lord, He'll give you more to give. Because I can't give anything. Oh, you'd be surprised what you can give. And yeah, if you give it to the Lord, He'll give you more to give. Mm -hmm. Try me and see, He said. Amen. Try me and see. If I won't open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing such as your soul cannot contain. And some people don't receive because, and, and you try to hang on to, hang on to, I ain't giving that preacher my money. I ain't giving, you know what? No, but if you give it away in transmissions and all kinds of other things. You're going to give it somebody. <laughs> Somebody's going to give it, right? <laughs> but if you give it to the Lord, it causes the transmission to go longer, a lot more miles, and that yeah. engine to last longer, and the tires yes, to wear longer. longer. <laughs> he said, I will bless you coming in and going out. Yeah. I'll bless your home. I'll bless your field. I'll bless your basket. I'll bless your store. And everything you put your hand to do, I'll bless you. You know, Brother now, Pat, we, we, went into, us. we went into the tire store. She'd had trouble. She blew a tire out. We went into the tire store and he got to looking at the records and the, and the tires on the car and the truck. He said, well, I can't believe these tires look this good. I mean, they weren't worn at all. I mean, they put a new one on, didn't they? At about three years, I couldn't even tell which one was. <laughs> well. We went to buy a piece of electronic equipment, which we needed, had to do with the computers. And uh, 
what they won for was really a pretty big prize. Well, the one that, that we thought would be just what we needed for our outfit, the only one that they didn't have any. I said, well, what about that four model right there? Well, he said, I don't know. He said, if I can, uh, let me look at it. And he checked it out. He said, I don't know. He said, I may be able to give you that since it's, 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 it's listed as being used. No, it's never done anything but sit on a shelf. But they ended up, it was almost half off the time they got done. <laughs> and, I, I, and, and, and it was, God made it possible. For the very same thing, he just didn't have a box around it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and God will do those things in so many different ways, you know. Yes, yes. He'll, he'll just do it while well, we could go on and on about it. All of you know that. You've all been... But see, try me and see. If you try, you'll see. Put it to the test, you'll find out. You cannot outgive God. It's impossible. No cannot no be done. Mm -hmm. And if you learn that, you'll learn a valuable lesson. You'll, you'll never be in, in want. God will always provide for you. Amen. I've given five and got back 20. You do. I mean, you, just, you just do. do it. Those that tried it, it's no big secret. It just yeah. happens. And, and God calls you to happen. You get it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> And God loves a cheerful giver. And every situation, you say, well, I just can't give. I just can't give. The fact is, you can't afford God to. <coughs> That's right. You have to. And I know somebody's got designs on your money. They always have. Somebody, and somebody will get it. Somebody will get it. You think going to hang on to it? Nah. Somebody's going to get it. Somebody got to try it. They're, you know, they're going to get it. So and he said, uh, and into what sort of house you enter first say, peace be to this house. You know, that you can bring the peace with you. You have the ability. You have the Prince of Peace. And you bring that peace, right? Yes. And you go into a house, and a lot of houses are war zones. Some houses are war zones. If I thank God for anything for my house, it's a house of peace. Yes. I can kick back and be myself. I really love Praise being God. home. Praise I do. Lord. I love the atmosphere of my home. That Daisy May is the easiest person you ever got along with your life. <laughs> you know, there's people that think she's stuck up. You're blessed. And uh, she's shy. You wouldn't think so because she gets up and does a lot of things. But she's very shy. And they think she's stuck up. Uh, she, uh, Daisy, if you got Daisy as a friend, I'm going to tell you, you got a good friend. That's right. Amen. She'll go plumb out of her way. She'll take a loss to see that you get what you want. Amen. She's just that type of person. If you ever, if you ever get no, and it's nice to be able to say that about your wife. Amen. Amen. I had a wife one time, I couldn't say that about her. Amen. <laughs> and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> And I still do my best not to say anything about it. She's a pretty good person. But there's a lot of other things I can say that I, would, I just won't say. <laughs> but I can tell you about Daisy May. She's a good one. She's a good one. She helps me in every way. She's always willing to do whatever I want to do. Whatever you think. I think we'll do this, that, and the other. You know, I've always got the big plan. You know. Take your chair out here. And then she may very quietly give me every reason why I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes I say, I think you're right. <laughs> I, think I, I, think I, I think I might change that. <laughs> that has been known to be done. But I'm just saying, my home is a home of peace. And I really thank God for that. Because it hasn't always been that way. It was a war zone one time. And when you go out and take this gospel, sometimes you're taken out into a war zone. You don't know what you're going into. Amen. And you go and you try to plant a seed. You try to leave a good thought. But if you get wrapped up in all, everything's going on in them homes, you're going to have a lot of problems. And I tell Brother Chuck when he, goes, when he goes to visit these people, don't take anything in there from the church. Don't take our problems in there to those people. Amen. 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 And I've heard about those things happening. Thank you. Don't, don't do that. You're, going, you're in there representing the church and representing God. And you're going, you're trying to just drop seeds. 
That's really all you're going to do is drop some seed. You're not going to do much more than that. And then somewhere along the line, God may open the door to give you to do a little bit more. And then you do that. Okay? But, uh, but if you do much more than that, you're just going to cause a lot of problems for you and for everybody else. It's not a good thing to do. Debate just doesn't work. Debate is a, that's an element of the world. Yes. This Word of God is undebatable. It is what it is. <coughs> and whatever you understand about, that's what it is to you. Right? And you and I may have a different understanding about it. Now we can discuss it, but I'm going to tell you, if you're not careful, you get into debate, and debate will not do anything. That's right. Revelation. This comes by revelation. That's right. Only word. And when you talk to people, you're talking to people that, in most cases, don't have any revelation of it. And you know what you know because it's been revealed to you. And once you see it, there's nobody can ever take it out of your heart. Amen. The best argument in the world won't, won't take it out of your heart. That's right. I know what I know. Don't right. tell me. I know. <laughs> it means something to know, doesn't it? That's right. Oh, when you know, nobody can take that out of you. I must confess, there's times I thought I knew. And I'd argue, I know, I know, I know. And guess what? I found out I didn't know. <laughs> well, I knew. <clears throat> and I believe in the eyes of God that it was just as if I did know. Now, you may not believe that, but I believe we're saved by what we understand. Amen. 20 years ago, I didn't know what I know today. I believe I was just the same then as I am today. In fact, there are some things I've done almost a 180 degree turnaround on. I still believe I was saved because I was doing all that I know. I believe that's your requirement to do what you know. As God reveals that to you, as you walk in the light, then you. As He reveals that light to you, you walk in that light. Yes. And I don't believe you can walk in light you haven't received. Amen. <laughs> right? But if you believe God uh, caused you to, walk, to find that light, you've got to believe those you're dealing with, God did cause them to find that light too. Amen. And some that you never Amen. suspected will, will, will walk into that light. Amen. So He said... Uh, so and now I said, uh, and in the once of a house you enter, say, Peace be in this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, I said sometimes that Son of Peace is not there. If not, it shall turn to you again. They don't, there's no reason you can't take it on out with you as you go. There's no reason you should be all tore up. Because everybody don't receive you, they just don't receive you. Some people, won't, they don't understand what you're talking about, they never will. And you just have to accept that and believe that. And just take it all with you and go on down the line. They, they used to have a saying in sales, some will, some won't, so what? <laughs> and you got discouraged where everybody didn't, didn't uh, sell, you couldn't sell to. You know, you don't waste your time on people that... That's the reason when people call and they, and they start to speak serious, I'll say, uh, uh, listen, I wouldn't be interested. Thank you. And I hang up. And my wife say, that's rude. No, it's not. They can go on to the next name on the next name on the next piece of paper. They're not going to sell me nothing. And they don't want to spend a half hour talking to somebody. They are not going to tell you. Anything. The very next guy they get, they say, man, that's just what I've been looking for. That's the man they're trying to get right there. <laughs> Right. But I do. They'll start that big sales pitch. Well, that's not with me, Anderson. Thank you. Well, he said thank you. And I, I'm quick. I got a quick answer. I just asked him for their home phone number. And God bless they don't you. Don't want to give it to me. I say, oh, you don't want me calling you at home? Oh, now you know how I feel. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Then. That's a good. That's a good thought, huh? Ask him for the home number. I don't give my home number. Oh, you call me? Think you're better than I am? <laughs> If I can't call you, what are you calling me for? That's a good one, isn't it? I never thought of that. But I generally don't get that for a long. They just start in and I say, listen, I wouldn't be interested. Thank you. Wow. You tell them I don't have any money and they hang up. If you want to get me, you have to uh, do something other than that sales pitch. This is not a sales pitch, Brother Pat. I need to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll listen to you now. Mark, what are you trying to sell me? <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a way to do everything. There's but but you can't let rejection hurt you. Everybody is not going to receive you. No, that's not true. So you just move on down the line, right? So he said, and in the same house remain, you know, eating and drinking such things as they give. I, I've had people say, well, you know, if, if uh, uh, why why would a preacher take money from people that that uh, that uh, they know are not for them? They'll take money from anybody. We don't care. <laughs> Lucky Luciano's, put it in the basket. We'll take it. <laughs> That's what he's saying here. If they're going to feed you, eat. You know, come on. Amen. <laughs> Remain eating and drinking such things they give. For the labor is worthy of its hire. Go not from house to house. In other words, don't just waste your time going places they're not going to receive you. Right? If you pray, God open doors for you. Amen. He'll cause Amen. you can waste a lot of time on people. And I, I, I know people that immediately they want to draw you into some debate. I'll tell you right now, I'm not interested in debating you. Brother Pete Wade used to love to do that. But mm -hmm. back years ago, he was a Nazarene back in those days. But he used to, uh, he, he invited me to his house for dinner. Mm. He did it two or three different times. Then he's going to start on this big evil. He was one to straighten me out because I was Pentecostal. I said, look, I want to tell you before you even start, I will not debate the Word of God with you. I don't have any time to waste. I'm running for my life, and I will not debate the Word of God with you. I well, used to say the time come that he, we got him baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost too. <laughs> but, I mean, God did. God worked that yeah, out. Brother Pratt, I had a man call me up, and he one day run this other minister down. And the Lord just spoke to me, you know, you're on the preparation command. That's what I told him. I said, you know, when God called me to preach, I said, he didn't put me on the judging committee. He put me on the preparation committee. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a waste of time, that kind of stuff. So he said, uh, the labor is worthy of his heart. Go not from house to house. And into what sort of city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are sent before you. And heal the sick that are there, and is saying to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But in the whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out in the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city, sh shake the dust, you know what I'm talking about, which cleaveth to us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is, is uh, come nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for one of that city. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, I, uh, some people love to, to get Mormons or, or Jehovah Witnesses, and you know. And I, you know, I have come, I come to my house and I'm living next door, and I'm sure they know who I am. But they'll come, and I'll say, "How you doing today?" And they say, "Well, I'm something here I want to share with you." I said, "I'm going to be honest with you, boys. Me and you is about as far as the east is and the west, <laughs> and I'll just be wasting a lot of time with you. You know, I pastor this little church over here in Pentecostal." We shall talk about it. Yeah. Don't yeah. let you know. Then I'll get them well, away. Right? And, I, I, and, and I really don't have time to debate with you. And and but but I admire what you're trying to do. And God bless you, you know. And generally they'll say, Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it going down. Why do they want to waste half a day with me? They ain't gonna debate me in with it. Yeah, and they're not gonna accept what I'm saying. You know? And uh you can waste a lot of time. There's a way to preach this gospel and make it effective. Isn't that right? Amen. So it said, uh, but I say, but anyway, woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Beth Bethsaida, I want to say this, for if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And when he talked about Chorazin, it was about like, uh, what was that he said? He talked about uh, uh, where one, not once stone would be upon another. Uh, oh, he, he prophesied against it and said, not, there, there come a time not one stone will be upon another. Matthew 24, Jack. Yeah, but I can't think of the city. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Ah, you know it. Well, as I do. <laughs> but anyhow, 
I'm just going blank. But Corazon, uh, if, if you go back and read some of the history of Corazon, I want to bring this out because this is this is important. Corazon was a was a temple, and it was a, but it was a place that didn't have much prominence in history. But he showed that God knew all about it. I mean, even though it was very small and, and, uh, and didn't have the renown that some of the bigger places had, God took stock of it because Jesus mentioned <coughs> it right here. It, it became in ruins also. And, and, uh, and one of the things that they did, they, was, they practiced witchcraft there, they were into humanism, they, uh, there wasn't no gospel in there. It was all... And he was talking about not getting into false religions and things that are not true and not, not of the Spirit and not of God. This is what he was really crying out against. we got a lot of churches today that are social churches. They're not, they don't really preach a gospel of change of heart. They, treat, they preach a social gospel. You know, and, they, and you may think, well, God's not interested in that. But yet he was he knew all about Chorazin. And not that he warned about it. And that he that he uh, he said, and Bethsaida, for if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. He, he said, Look, you had a visitation of God, and all your ministry has become has been a, a minister of humanism and everything not pertaining to the scripture. Amen. I watch a lot of these big churches, especially the mega churches. They have great programs for children. They got rock climbing wall. They got uh, they got uh, uh, gymnasiums. They got a lot of things for kids to do. You hear that a lot. It's a shame you can't get people to come to church two hours a week mm -hmm. just to hear the gospel. Yes. We got a lot of places for kids to do. We got the why. We got we got you know, there's a lot of places where kids got things to do. And I'm not against that. I, I wish we had a big uh, all purpose room where we could have a gym and, and the kids could do a lot of things. I think that's great. I, I don't I'm not preaching against that. I'm just saying they get where that's that's all it is. That's why they go There's not much gospel being preached. It's just a lot of playtime for the kids, mm -hmm. right? And we have a little nursery out here. Some churches they send their kids to a nursery, and that's where they're there. It's to get the kids out of the way, so we can all hear about God. I know the kids stay with us and hear about God here too. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? You can. It, it, Mean well, you can take kids from out of the church. Right. Well, we got we got a swim pool out here. We got a badminton court. We got a basketball. You know, yeah, but they don't hear nothing about God. Right. Right. We're here to save souls. Let's go back to the beginning. What's this all about? We're preaching the gospel. Amen. I like for the little kids be in here when we're jumping and shouting. Amen. I don't care if they jump around a little bit and clap their hands and kind of, you know, a lot of people think, hey, kids aren't to do that. Oh, why not? Come on, let them, them jump around. Them. Who's it going to hurt? They don't hurt nothing. Well, they're just a play. That's all right. Let them play. Teach them when they're young and they won't depart from Well, I'll tell you one thing. They'll never forget it. It'll be a part of their life. Oh, my kids used to baptize a dog. You've heard me tell about this. <laughs> Brother Midnight, then put him down. And <laughs> baptized Midnight. Poor old Midnight got baptized so many times. <laughs> I told about Mary Beth preaching to the cows. <laughs> we lived out on our Route 3, and there's a big field there. She'd, she'd put hay down along the, down along the fence line. The other cows come in, she said, That's it, children, come on down. And you, uh, you know. <laughs> and she started to preach to them. I used to hide in the, we had a fenced in, uh, a screen in back porch. So I used to stand up there and watch her, boy. she just preach and she'd holler and carry on. <laughs> I'm not sure to see her playing things like that, wouldn't you? Yes, amen. And I'm not against providing things for the kids. If we were able to do that, I would love to be able to do that. 
But I still don't think church ought to become all just all playtime. Amen. There's something serious about what we're doing here. And I believe the little kids need to know it too. Amen. Oh, my time is all gone. Good Lord. I want to get down here just a little further. Capernaum, that's what I was trying to think of. There it is. And now Capernaum. Now Capernaum was well known and, and is, and is well uh, glorified in history, but Chorazin was hardly mentioned. <coughs> but they had a, had a temple at Chorazin too. And even though it wasn't world famous like Capernaum, God knew about it. You may think God's not interested in, in you. God, he knows all, don't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Said, which are exalted to heaven and shall be thrust down to hell when he prophesied against Capernaum here. And thou Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, thou shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. Oh, they really thought, boy, they, they was doing something. We had a, a man, and, and Brother Mark knows who you're talking about, came here some, and he found out, I guess through his church, that when he prayed for the sick sometimes, they just fall out in the spirit. <coughs> and that, I'm sure that's happened to most ministers some along the way. <coughs> sometimes people just fall out. I don't try to explain that, but I've seen it many times. He enjoyed that so much that he thought that was a, a, a great thing. That He said, I lay hands on them and they just fall out. He thought that was a big, big thing. So he got to the point he was trying to shove them down. Yeah. If they didn't fall down, he's going to push them down. And I've seen him push and then resist and he push and then resist. And he did that here. And I went and had a little discussion with him. I said, I don't want you pushing anybody down. I would resent no, that's that. That's not the Spirit doing it. Absolutely. You know, that's how God wanted me to get slayed out in the Spirit. And believe it or not, it does happen. Amen. Oh, yeah. And it's a wonderful experience when it happens. I mean, you're gone with the wind. You're, you're out of it. I mean, you're out in the seventh heaven somewhere. <laughs> it's a great, great feeling. I don't want nobody pushing me down. Amen. I'll resent that and I'll plant myself. You ain't going to push me down. Right. <laughs> See, God can't get any glory in that. Yeah. But he thought that was a big, big thing because one time he prayed for the sick and no doubt he was honest hearted yeah. and he meant well and God honored his prayer and God allowed somebody to be slain out and good Lord, he said, even the devil is subject to me. Boy, I pray for him and they just fall out. It was the same spirit that he had when he told that. Same spirit that these guys here got. Amen. But he said, yeah, and he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Don't, don't rejoice because sometimes you pray for somebody and they fall out. I got news for you. You didn't have nothing to do with that. That's right. That's, right. That's my doing. Right? But rejoice because you've been, your sins have been forgiven you. Hallelujah. And your name yeah. is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. That's the thing we want to rejoice in, right? Yes. So you're not wanting to, you know, to get lifted up. Amen. And men do sometimes. Boy, look at what I did. And they'll do that a lot of times. Sometimes you go to some of the big church and look what we've done. I mean, that spirit is there. The, the whole theme of the, look what we have done. Look what we have done. Look what a temple we've built. <coughs> My God, look what. And uh, it's something to be proud of, I guess. Then they have service just once a week. But our Savior was born in a manger. Amen. He said the birds have nests. Foxes have holes. Yeah. Son of man have not a place to lay his head. Didn't make him any less God, did it? Thank God. Didn't make him any less Savior. Hallelujah. Thank God. And I believe we have to be of that same mind. Yes. That same mindset. God bless you. Jesus loves me this
Yeah. Not just for me. Maybe for someone else. A touch from the Master's hand in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What chapter Amen. 17. It's actually 17, 18, and 19. It's on prayer and, and, and obedience. And that's what the Lord gave me. And uh, for me, myself, and I just want to share it with you. And then I have to uh, actually write down everything that comes from my heart because I can't give it out. So I, uh, I wrote everything down. So um, bear with me. That's <laughs> okay. Good In the past, I would read out of my Bible and couldn't remember what I had read. I'm sure a lot of us has been there. Amen. So I applied myself to sit down, and what I read, I would write it down. I asked the Lord, where do you want me to start? I opened my Bible to 1 Kings, and it was in 17th, and it went on the 18th and 19th chapter, too. I know these stories... And I love to hear these stories out of my Bible. And there's so much that I I forgot. If you don't stay in your Bible, you, you know you 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 forget. And uh, and you know the song "Dust on the Bible." Well, that was me there for a while. I had dust on my Bible. Shame on me. And um, the Bible's to edify in just our lives, to fight everyday battles. It's my shield and my weapon against the principalities of the world. And in Ephesians, you don't have to turn to it, but in Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, all, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. Being obedient to the Lord and praying is what God wanted me to do. And that is what I got from First Kings. I got up one night is last week, cause I, cause the Lord kept me in First Kings. There, for, I mean, I ran, the, I ran over and over and over, but He kept bringing me back. I would open my Bible and it, it'd be there. Uh -huh. So I wasn't receiving what I was supposed to be receiving, but I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was quoting a scripture as I was going to the, the I was three o'clock in the morning, I was quoting a scripture going to the restroom, and it was in James 5.16. Confess your faults to one to another and yes. pray for one another that you may be healed. But this was what was coming to me. It, the effectual prayer, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I was quoting that scripture, so the Lord wanted me to, you know. It was for me. Elijah. Now in 1 Kings, Elijah was a righteous man that would overcome obstacles in his way. And when he prayed to God, things changed. And this is in 1 Kings 17. He prayed to God for the rain to stop. <coughs> Then God sent him to the brook to be fed by the ravens. And I'm sure everybody knows all these stories. And, but it's different. I mean, you know, like the Lord brought me back to it. And, and you know, he, I seen what he wanted me to see. All right. And uh, then the brook dried up. Elijah had his ups and downs just like us. And if you read in there, he did. He, he, was, he was up and down. Then God sent him to the city where the widow woman and her son was. Yeah. He was obedient to God. Fixing to make her last man die, Elijah told her to make him a cake first, then herself and her son. Because of her obedience, Elijah told her her oil and flour will not diminish yes. until the rain came. And then that was a miracle itself, you know, that don't happen. I mean, you know, we everyday things, you know, where you get low. I mean, God provides. Yes, He does. So, she, you know, she cried unto the Lord for mercy in her son. Persistent prayer. And I'm sure she was. Then, she, then her son fell sick and died. And she, you know, like everybody else, you know, why God? Why did you allow my son to die? Yeah. I've been faithful. I've been obedient. My Lord. 
Even sorrows come when we're serving Him as best as we can and doing His work. Sometimes we'll never understand God's plan. Amen. Sometimes it's way different than what we think. Amen. And then uh, 1720, is, uh, Elijah even questioned the Lord. Why, Lord, did you bring evil upon the widow woman by letting her son die? He prayed earnestly to God to give life back to the boy. And the child was brought back. Effective prayer. And that's what, the, I mean, the Lord was giving me, you know. It's not what you pray. Uh, I mean, you got to be really specific in that's what right. you pray. That's right. And uh, that was actually another miracle. It was said that after many days, God told Elijah to tell Ahab that the rain was to come upon the earth again. After confrontation with King Ahab, they had a showdown on top of Mark Car Mount Carmel. And from morning to night, the false prophets prophets tried to get something to happen. Yeah. And nothing happened. I mean, they just, um, right. I'm sure if you can imagine what they was doing, then cutting themselves, they said they cut themselves and everything else. And there was actually 450 of them. So true today, we make, we try to make things happen with, uh, without seeking God first. Amen. And I'm guilty of that too. I see in 1 Kings 18.33, they told how Elijah took over and rebuilt the altar. Yeah. Trenched around it and took 12 buckets of water. It was actually four at a time, but I counted. It was 12 buckets of water and poured over it. And then, and then Elijah prayed to God. Each time he prayed to God for things to happen. Yeah. And uh, he, it was 18.37, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that I am thy servant. And then I have done all these things at thy word. Then the fire consumed the burnt sacrifice and dried up all the water. Then did the people believe. After all that, Elijah went and prayed for the rain to come. He sent his servant to look upon the sea, and each time the servant didn't see anything. But the last time, in which it was the seventh, he, he, the servant come back says, I see a cloud as a man's fist uh -huh. that rose from the sea. This, to this whole time Elijah was on the ground with his face between his knees praying to God. God was telling me this, you know, pray, pray effectively, fervently for people, yourself, you know. It was, it was for me. <laughs> and, uh, the, um, Okay, get back where I was. Praise the name God was telling me that, yeah. I wish I could just get out and say what's in my heart. Good, but, that's great. Yeah, good. Instead of reading it. But, yeah, you know, good. I had about several pages and I cut it down to about five and then I cut it back down to about three. So I said, you don't want to wear the people out. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> Good, uh, good then Elijah told his servant to go to tell Ahab to pre prepare his chariot and ride back to Jezreel, which was 16 miles. So it must have been 16 miles from Mount Carmel to there, back to Jezreel. Yeah. That's what I figured. So Ahab rode and Elijah was on foot. It said in 1 Kings 1846, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now that's just amazing because, you know, you're on foot and he's riding. Yeah. <laughs> but that, no, actually, that's the Lord. Amen. Then Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah for slaying all the false prophets. She should have been there to witness what God had done. Yeah. She wouldn't have been trying to... <laughs> want to kill him, you know. <laughs> Elijah had been disgusted and tired, being disgusted and tired, discouraged. Now he has to run for his life. He stood for God. Now he ran. He was obedient to God. He prayed earnestly to God for the rain to come. He showed the people whose God was in charge. He helped the widow woman and her son. <laughs> And, I mean, he did and did and did and just practically get knocked down, you know. 
but uh, and you gotta get back up. Right. And uh, and to me, I mean, I mean, uh, I, uh, I I can relate with that because sometimes I get on pity parties say, I do, I do, I do. But what about me, me, me? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, and usually I get reminded from someone that my rewards will be great in heaven, and I get over it, you know. But sometimes we all get there. Aren't sure, man. Sure, man. All right. In First Kings nineteen four, so Elijah left his servant and went. A day's journey and sat under a juniper tree and re requested to die. How many of us been there? Oh, yeah, Just yeah. want to give up, forget it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I'm tired. Just take me on, you know. <laughs> and nothing go, going the way it should, but I'm still serving you, Lord. An angel came by and ministered to Elijah and told him to eat. Because he was to journey 40 days without food and water to, the, to Mount Horeb. I think that's how to say Mount Horeb. He came to a cave and lodged there. And the Lord asked him, what are you doing here? Again, Elijah felt burdened and alone. Surely hungered after, by that time. And the Lord directed him to stand outside the cave because the Lord was passing by. And then a strong wind, earthquake, and a fire occurred, but the Lord was not in it. Then Elijah stood at, this, at the entrance, and then in chapter 19, 12, he says, Then came a still, small voice. A still, soft, small voice. It don't take nothing spectacular to happen for the Lord to talk to us. Just got to stand. Hallelujah. Elijah was persistent in praying and obedient to God, no matter what he went through. And sometimes we don't know our outcome, but God does. Amen. Thank you for listening to me.